Hi everyone, so this is the second lesson of the updated 2024 sequences and series pack. Um, we're looking at arithmetic sequences and series. A lot of people call them arithmetic progressions. So teachers will refer to them as like an AP. And then with geometric, when we do that, we call it a geometric progression, GP. But if we stick with what the exam board uses, it uses sequences and uses series. Um, right, so. Let's have a quick look. So we add on the same amount. So the first term is A. So if you look, the first term here is 2, 99, and 3. And D is the common difference. So that's what I'm adding on. So you can see for each of these, we're adding on a plus five. So D is five. For this one, we're taking away two every time. So D is minus two. For this one, we're adding on a quarter every time. So D is a quarter there. So not too bad. Well, kind of GCSE that, isn't it, really? So it just reminds you that the first term is A, the common difference is D. Right. right, so going back to GCSE, you can generate terms by subbing in the numbers. Now I always say, do the first three terms. The reason being is if you're not sure if it's arithmetic or geometric, it just sorts it out in your head. So if I put 1 in, so this, this n here tells you where it is in the list, the one that I've just circled. So if I use n is 1, then u1 is my first term. It's 6 lots of 1 minus 2. So that's 4, so my first term is 4. If I put n is 2 in, it takes me to the next position in the list, which is u2. And that's 6 lots of 2 minus 2, which is 10. So I know, if it's definitely arithmetic, that that I'm adding on 6. But once we do geometric, I don't know if I'm adding on 6 or multiplying it by, say, 10 over 4. So I just do a little double check. So I do the third one just to make sure that it works. And you can see for each of these... Oops, I'm adding on 6. So D is 6. Looking at the next one, and if I do, don't know, I'm going to write it all right. If I put 1 in, now this one's slightly different, this one. This one relates the new one to the old one. So I am going to write everything in. So U1 is minus 2, so that's my starting point. So U2 will be U1 plus 3, because this one is the next one along. So u2 is u1, which is minus 2, plus 3, which is 1. u3 is going to be u2 plus 3, so it'll be 1 plus 3, which is 4. And if you look, the sequence going from minus 2 to 1 to 4, goes up by plus 3 every time. So D is 3 there. But this one's quite interesting, this, this B one, because it uses the, the one before to add on to it most definitely. Right, so let's look at the second example. I've occupied my timer, which is 10 minutes. Uh, the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence are defined as, find the value of K. So I know, if I start off with K plus 2, if I add D onto it, I get 2K plus 3. And I know if I start off with 2K plus 3, if I add D onto it, it gives me the next term. So I can make some little expressions, don't I? So I've got a K plus 2 plus D is 2K plus 3. And then I've also got 2K plus 3 plus D is 4k minus 2. So if I 
rearrange these for D, I can put them equal to each other and solve it. Uh, so I've got here, so I've got D is going to be, so 2K plus, well, 2K take K is going to be K, 3 take 2 is going to be plus 1. And with this one, do the same, I'll have a 2K minus 1. But D is the same. So the k plus 1 must be the same as the 2k minus 5. So if that's the case, k is 6. Martin's got minus 6. How have I got that? Let's have a look. Have I got this right? So k plus 2 is going to be 5. So I'll take the k, take the 2, k is k plus 1. 2k plus 3, 4k minus 2. Take the 2k is 2k, take the 3 is minus 5, put them equal to each other, take the k over that side, take the minus 5 over that side, I get k is plus 6. So I'll have to query that with Martin. Uh, what are we on? Six minutes? We've not got much, have we? Let's do a lot of walking. So it says it's useful to have a formula for the nth term. So if I build it up, your first term is n. Your second term is a plus b. Your third term is a plus 2d. Your fourth term is a plus 3d. And you should be quite merrily seeing a pattern with the d's. So your nth term, so if you look, there's only 1d in the second place, 2d's in the third place, 3d's in the fourth place. So for the nth place, will be n minus 1. We can read that because it's not quite working the board. So that's the term n minus 1. And we'll stick that in that little box there. Look, a plus n minus 1 d. You've got to learn that it's not on the formula sheet. Uh, so look, so first term we're going to call a. Common difference we call d. For nth term, u with a subscript n. So u is the term, n is its position in the list. If n was 100, it's the 100th one I'm going for. The last term we call l for last. And the sum, we do a big S, capital S, with a subscript n for the sum of. And once again, the n is the position in the list. Ooh. Some random boxes on this I haven't quite worked properly. So I'm just going to, I'm on yours, I suspect it won't have that. Um, so we're given on the formula sheet n over 2, let me put it above it, n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. So that's the sum of the term. Now if you know the last term, and you know how many are in it, you can slightly adapt it because that formula is like an n over 2 with an a plus an a plus n minus 1d. And because of that, I can change this little red bit. If I know what the last term is and I know how many terms there are, I can change that into n. So I have another term, which is n over 2, a plus l, there. So these are on the formula sheet, but for this one, you need to know how many and what the last term is. There, there we go. Right, more nine minutes twenty. Let's have a quick look at this. See if I can do this last question in about twenty five seconds. So it says, for example, three. Uh, so we know that a is three. We know that d is four. And do you know what? I'm going to stop and I'll start another one. 